Tonight on OC News, a member of our news team was at the concert in Las Vegas and speaks to us exclusively about the shooting. CSUF students are taking a knee in protest in front of the Titan Student Union right now. We'll tell you why. And Minter Madness is upon us. Can you say stress? There's a program on campus helping us to relieve some of the tension. All this and more as OC News starts right now. Welcome and thank you for joining us at OC News. I'm Aliyah Becerra. And I'm Ksenia Taranuk. OC News is brought to you by the broadcast journalism students at Cal State Fullerton. President Trump and the First Lady were in Las Vegas today. They met with victims of the shooting rampage. During his speech, Trump honored the congressman and his first responders at the scene. He also took the time to pay his respects to civilians on the scene and closed his speech by promising that the nation would overcome as one. In the months ahead, we will all have to wrestle with the horror of what has unfolded this week. But we will struggle through it together. We will endure the pain together, and we will overcome together as Americans. During his visit, the president told first responders and wounded victims that if they are ever in Washington, that they are more than welcome to visit the White House. Trump declined to answer questions regarding gun control, saying that he would rather not talk about that today. Now with an update on the suspect, Stephen Paddock. The girlfriend of Paddock, Marilou Danley, arrived at the Los Angeles Federal Building early this morning to be questioned by the FBI. She says that she had absolutely no previous knowledge of the attack. She thought Paddock was sending her away because she was breaking up with her. Jason Aldean, the artist on stage at the Route 91 Festival while the shooting took place, has been posting on his condolences on his Instagram and Twitter accounts. The country star announced yesterday afternoon that his show scheduled in Los Angeles, San Diego, and Anaheim this weekend would be canceled and ticket costs would be refunded. Aldean said, quote, I feel like out of the respect for the victims, their families, and our fans, it is the right thing to do. It has been an emotional time for everyone involved this week, so we plan to take some time to mourn the ones we have lost and be close with our family and friends." End quote. We have an exclusive from one of our own CSUF students who attended the festival. Kelsey Brink is a member of our news team and she, like many others who attended the country, country music festival, is shaken and has gone home to spend time with her family in Modesto. She and two friends were in Vegas for a fun weekend away, the trio standing in the back of the crowd when the shots rang out. She still hasn't spoken to anyone but us. She said, quote, at 10.04, I took a picture of the stage and sent it to my mom saying, Jason Aldean is so good. At 10.08, when the first shots were fired, one of my friends thought it was a firework, but my other friend and I thought otherwise. I was running up to random cars asking if I could get in and if they asked me why, I ran, just ran to the next car until I found one that didn't need me to explain myself. We sat in our room all night, my two friends and I, and the couple watched the news with all of the lights off. I was terrified and am completely thankful that God was watching over me. I was praying I didn't get shot and if, I was going, if it was going to happen, that was something that I knew I would survive from. This is going to stay with me forever, and now that the shock is starting to fade away, the pain is starting to roll in. Melissa Vega has an update on the victims from Southern California of the Las Vegas shooting. At least 58 people were killed, and at least 500 others were injured Sunday night. Here are some of the victims' stories. Brian Fraser, 39, of La Palma, was a church-going man who attended Friends Church in Yorba Linda. He was the vice president of sales at Green Path, a credit counseling agency. Fraser is survived by his wife and four children. Hannah Adlers, 35, from Murrieta, was a wife, mother, daughter, sister, and friend. She had three children with her husband of 17 years. Her brother, Lance Miller, said she was dedicated to her family and was loved by everyone that met her. Carrie Burnett, 34, lived in Riverside worked at Disney California Adventures in Anaheim for 10 years. Barnett was part of the culinary team at Flo's V8 Cafe in Carsland. She was the oldest of three children. Candice Bowers, 40, from Garden Grove, had a son, a daughter, and had recently adopted a two-year-old niece. She was a single mother. Andrea Castilla, 
28, from Orange, was celebrating her birthday with friends and family at the concert. Castilla attended Cypress College and worked at Sephora. Austin Davis, 29, from Riverside, was an only child. He was a pipe fitter and a member of the United Association Union. Thomas Day Jr., a lifelong resident of Corona, worked at the family business as an estimator. Day Jr. graduated from Corona High, played Little League Baseball in the city, and later coach. Christina Duarte, 22, from Torrance, graduated from the University of Arizona in May. She was a fan service associate for the LA Kings. Teresa Kumara, 38, of Placentia, was a member at the For His Glory Community Church in Fullerton. Kimura is survived by her parents and a sister. Rachel Parker, 33, from Long Beach, was a records technician for the Manhattan Beach Police Department for 10 years. Jonathan Palmonte, 30, was a Long Beach native. He graduated from Cal State Long Beach. His wife gave birth to twins a month before the shooting. Jordan Rivera, 21, was a fourth-year student at Cal State San Bernardino in the healthcare management program. Christopher Roba, 28, previously lived in Corona. He previously worked at a crunch fitness gym in Laverne. He was a U.S. Navy veteran who served in Afghanistan. Michelle Vu, 34, was a resident of Los Angeles. She graduated from the University of Davis. Vu worked as a life insurance agent for the New York Life Insurance in Glendale. Sandy Casey, 35, lived in Redondo Beach. Casey had worked for nine years as a special education teacher in Manhattan Beach Middle School. She leaves behind her parents and a sister. To find out more information about the victims and how to help out, visit the Orange County Register. Reporting for OC News, Melissa Vega. As a deadline to renew DACA approaches, what will the end mean for dreams at Cal State Fullerton? Maria Valdez has more with the story. Over 800,000 people can face deportation if President Donald Trump pulls a plug on a program that protects undocumented immigrants who were brought to the United States as children. With President Trump weighing his options on whether or not to phase out the DACA program, the fate of immigrant dreamers has many people concerned about their future. We're in the cabins of Cal State Florida speaking to some of those dreamers. So, um, I was brought here uh, to the United States when I was uh, five years old. I was uh, born in Mexico, Mexico City. Uh, my mother brought me here when I was um, five, and I, I really didn't think about being, you know, undocumented or what it felt like not having uh, papers, not being a citizen, until I got to, I would say, my junior year and senior year of high school. As Trump's decision on DACA looms, dreamers wonder what's next. Um, after now that DACA has been, has been rescinded, you know, so many things are going through my mind. You know, what am I, where am I going to work? Uh, my jobs that I am working at right now, they require my work permit. It's, it's really tough. It's really shocking that um, they're trying to take away the program like DACA that really helps, you know, a lot of people. It benefits the economy, it benefits the U.S., and it really doesn't hurt anyone. Uh, I don't see why, it doesn't fit in my head why they're trying to end a program like DACA. Uh, if anything, you know, they should be trying to help us, not because, you know, we're asking for it and we just come here and, you know, we're asking for all these, all these rights and privileges, is that we've been Pretty much this is our life. This, we're like citizens here. We feel like citizens because we lived our lives here. This evening, Cal State Fullerton students are meeting at Titan Student Union for a Take a Knee photo session. They were told to bring signs and flags that represent their culture and community. It's an event to come together as a collective to show their resistance and demand for change. Scarlett Lobo is live at the scene. Yeah, here we are at the TSU sign where around 25 people from the SQU organization is meeting today to take a knee. Here I'm with Devin, uh, uh, who is going to answer some questions for us. So Devin, what's the reason, what's the purpose of all this? Well, we are here today to take a knee for police brutality, Black Lives Matter, um, all sorts of the issues that are plaguing this nation as of right now. And I feel like as a Fullerton community, if we come together to, as, as we said, take a knee, we can all... Uh, it might make a better change for the world and everywhere else. Okay, great. Is this related to the NFL uh, movement? Um, in some ways, it is, but we're not really, um, we're not really, pr not. It's it kind of is because we are. We, the inspiration was coming from Colin Kaepernick um, because he was the first one to take a knee, I believe. So um, I feel like that was a very deep um, 
inspiration for our movement here today. Okay, thank you so much, Devin. Yeah. Students are going to be today here at the TSU from 5 till 7.30 p.m. Uh, taking the knee to support this black movement. Thank you so much, guys. We're back with you. Coming up, can your mood affect how the flu vaccine can work? And the singer that has donated her concert proceeds to the victims of the Las Vegas shootings. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. With the help of Cal State Fullerton grad student, CSUF is educating students and implementing research methods to help our campus become more eco-friendly. Marissa Olid has more on the story. A grad student at California State University Fullerton, Malin Dixon, is on her way to help CSUF reach zero waste by 2020 by promoting successful campus-wide sustainability through her hands-on education. Dixon has had the opportunity to conduct research on a topic she is passionate about on a campus she loves and hopes to see the campus go in a green direction. As an undergrad, Dixon had studied McCarthy Hall and how much trash is diverted from a landfill. After not seeing the recommendations she suggested to facilities, she decided to take matters into her own hands as a graduate student. To promote the campus sustainability, Dixon is promoting hands-on education by having a display called Not Recycle More which displayed one day's worth of trash out in front of the humanities quad, education booths, and a YouTube video being displayed in classrooms. Humanities is the first building on campus to have both a recycle and waste bin in every classroom and a company signage on that. As for other buildings on campus, Dixon is hoping to get data from the humanities building for other buildings to follow in the same footsteps. The results, she has found the signs as well as the hands-on portion have improved the rates. As for now, Dixon is urging students to do their part. Thing kind of, hey, look at the signs. It's super simple what I'm saying. Just take the extra 10 to 15 seconds to figure out what goes where. Do your part to help our campus reach zero waste by 2020. Reporting for OC News, this is Marissa Lee. A music teacher is under investigation for being suspected of contaminating musical instruments with bodily fluids, and it has affected a Fullerton Unified School District. Rolling Hills Elementary School and several other Southern California school districts are under investigation, but Fullerton police say that it's important to note that there is no point, no indication of the flutes that are in fact tainted. The police are giving the flutes to the Unified School to the United States Postal Service and they will be handling the case. A deadly cholera outbreak worsens in Yemen and residents of Las Vegas continue to donate blood following Sunday's mass shooting. Let's turn now to Monica DeAnda with the latest on health. Thank you, Aliyah. I'm Monica DeAnda reporting on all things health today for OC News. The World Health Organization warns that the cholera outbreak in Yemen is the worst in modern history and that the outbreak is only deteriorating. Cholera is a bacterial disease usually spread in water and places with faulty water treatment, poor sanitation, and inadequate hygiene. According to the World Health Organization, as of September 13th, there were 2,074 known deaths from cholera across Yemen, with previous reports estimating that 5,000 people were being infected every day. The Red Cross says that by the end of this year, the number of suspected cholera cases in the country could reach 1 million. Yemen, which has been plagued by war, has about 750 100,000 cases of cholera so far. The head of the Red Cross delegation in the country says that given the trends of this unprecedented outbreak, Yemen may in fact reach the 1 million mark. Red Cross officials say the health system in Yemen has reached its breaking point. With flu season just around the corner, next we take a look at how, positive, how a positive mood may impact the effectiveness of the flu shot. 
A good mood can make you more fun to be around, and it can improve your health in a variety of ways, big and small. The Mayo Clinic says optimism not only helps you manage stress, it plays a role in cardiovascular health and even makes you more resistant to the common cold. According to a small study out of the UK, a positive attitude may also boost the effectiveness of your flu shot. Researchers with the University of Nottingham examined data from 138 people between the ages of 65 and 85. They all got a dose of the 2014-2015 influenza vaccine. Scientists took note of several health indicators, like mood, stress levels, negative thoughts, sleep patterns, and diet. They also looked at antibody responses at 4 and 16 weeks after the jab. Researchers found that participants who reported a more positive mood also had higher levels of antibodies in their blood. The study's senior author said there are a variety of factors that can affect how well a vaccine works, but believes the study suggests that mood is one of those factors. The study was published in the journal Brain, Behavior, and Immunity. For today's Health Minute, I'm Kim Hutcherson. That's all on health for today. I'm Monica DeAnda. Now back to Aaliyah and Ksenia at the desk. Natural disasters seem to be happening left and right around the world. Thankfully, we haven't had to experience anything here at home. But if something were to happen, how prepared would college students be? Reporter Taylor Martinez took, took the campus to find out more. We've seen so many natural disasters occurring the past few months, including hurricanes, fires, and earthquakes. Hearing about how much destruction can happen so quickly, the question has arose as to how aware and how prepared are today's college students if an emergency were to happen? I don't feel extremely prepared. I think that like my elementary school classes kind of prepared me at the most, and other than that, I don't feel like very prepared. In today's generation of college students, many have never really experienced a natural disaster, so it seems less likely that it could happen to them. See, none of us are ready, but I think it's an important thing that we should take into consideration. They feel as though it's such a rarity that the chances of it actually happening to them are so slim. Do they have food, water, or special belongings in an accessible place where they can drop and go? I know where to go and stuff, but I don't know like if there's any extra water or any food or what to do after. There's not enough information about what we should be doing to be prepared. Although Fullerton is a commuter campus, a lot of students still live on or around campus and are not prepared. I don't think any of us are prepared for like any type of natural disaster. By talking to students here at CSUF, it seems fair to say that they are aware of these natural disasters and know simple steps they can take if something were to happen. But they don't seem nearly as prepared as they should as far as being readily equipped or thinking that a natural disaster could actually happen. Reporting for OC News, I'm Taylor Martinez. It's the first week of October and we are experiencing some warm weather and clear sunny skies. Marissa Olid has more on weather. Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Marissa Olid and I'm here with your weather today. Taking a look at our current temperatures, we have a high of 81 with a low of 57. Winds are at 6 miles per hour and the humidity is at 39. Taking a look at our 5 day forecast, we can see that on Thursday it's going to be warm. We can expect Fridays and Saturdays temperature to be a little bit hotter than usual for the month of October with a high of 93 and then for Saturday a high of 92. The low for these two days will be 61. On Sunday and Monday we can see that we're going to cool back down a little bit into the 80s. For Sunday it will be 82 with a low of 61 and then for Monday when we start the work week it will be at 81 with a low of 60. That's all for the weather today. Thank you for watching. In the world of entertainment, Tom Petty's untimely death and Celine Dion's contributions to the aid of the Las Vegas victims. More on this with Maria Valdez. An emotional Celine Dion returned to the stage in Las Vegas on Tuesday night. It comes two days after the city and the country were rocked by the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. The singer told the crowd that proceeds for the night would go to the victims on Sunday's shooting at the Route 91 Harvest Festival and their families. Deline Celine Dion has two long-running performance, performance residencies in Las Vegas, the first in 2003. Dion said it would be a difficult decision on whether to return to the stage, but she ultimately decided to go on with her performance, quote, to show love and respect and support for those who were affected. Her announcement that proceeds would be donated drew more than 30 seconds of applause from the crowd. 
DN also dedicated the show to their victims, their families, first responders, and doctors and nurses who were working around the clock to save lives. Music legend Tom Petty died on Monday in Los Angeles. He was rushed to the hospital on Sunday after being, uh, being found unconscious in a cardiac arrest at his Malibu home. Petty was transported to UCLA Santa Monica Hospital, where he was reportedly placed on life support. Tommy Demetrius, longtime manager of Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, says Petty died peacefully around 8.40 p.m. surrounded by his family, his bandmates, and friends. Petty and the Heartbreakers first came into fame in the 1970s. He had a string of hits, both with the group and as a solo artist, including Start Bragging My Heart Around, Break Down, Listen to Her Heart, and the mega hit Free Falling. He, first, he just finished a 40th anniversary tour at the end of September, hinting to Rolling Stone in December that he would thought it would be his last group, last concert together. The rock legend um, died and he was 66. When we come back, we'll tell you how you can get a $1,000 scholarship courtesy of ASI. We also have the latest on Cal State Fullerton's professional sports. Heads up, ASI is offering eight scholarships. Seven of these are worth $1,000. Applications are due October 9th. However, midterms are upon us, so try not to procrastinate, Titans. Now we toss it on over to Cynthia Vargas Riesio, who has the latest on Cal State Fullerton uh, football and your local Cal State Fullerton athletics. Hey, OC. I'm Cynthia Vargas Riesio here with your sports fix. Taking you down the line from football victories and upsets, followed by your very own Titan Athletics News. Let's get started. It was a divided week four for Los Angeles football fans as the Rams defeated the Dallas Cowboys 35-30 in a fourth quarter nail biter. And the Chargers faced a tough loss against the Philadelphia Eagles 26-24. Let's take a look at some highlights. The first half belonged to the Dallas Cowboys, with star running back Ezekiel Elliott having one of his best running games so far this season. After a huge momentum shift, the second half was dominated by the Rams. Here in the third quarter, Goff takes the snap, hawks the ball in the air, caught by Gurley, and he takes it past the 30, the 20, the 10, and all the way in for a touchdown. After the early excitement from the Rams, all eyes look to Los Angeles' second team, the Chargers. After a reverse call in the fourth quarter led to a Chargers touchdown, LA fans looked like they would get their second win of the day. Unfortunately, the Eagles kept their lead and the Chargers dropped to 0-4. The Chargers will play the New York Giants in Week 5, and the Rams will face off against the Seattle Seahawks at home. Lastly, we bring it on home to our Cal State Fullerton Athletics. Women's Volleyball faced off in a nail-biting match against Cal State Bakersfield Wednesday night, with junior outside hitter Madeline Schneider getting a career-high 25 kills. After losing the first set 21-25, the Titans came back with aggression during the second set and went back and forth with Bakersfield until finally rallying in a 26-24 victory. During this set, the Titans recorded 20 kills and only 4 errors. However, the battle was not enough to give the Titans the win in the last two sets and they lost the match to Bakersfield 3-1. The ladies will head on the road this weekend to face off against UC Riverside. In soccer news, Fullerton men's soccer defeated Cal Poly last Friday night. Senior Diego Sanchez scored his first goal of the season in the 25th minute on a penalty kick that gave the Titans a 1-0 lead. Fullerton played with the man down for the last 54 minutes of the game, but this was not enough to allow them to lose their momentum. 
junior Sam Moles made a game-changing save in the 76th minute, keeping Cal Poly scoreless and allowing the Titans to end in a 1-0 victory. The Titans are now first place in the Big West Conference and have been practicing all week to prepare for their home game this Thursday against UC Davis at 7 p.m. at Titan Stadium. That's going to do it all for your sports action here today. I'm Cynthia Vargas Riso reporting on all your local favorite teams. Back to you ladies at the desk. It's that time of the year, midterm madness. Brenda Villa is live at the TSU Titan Bull Billards to share a free and fun event to help stay away from the books. Hi, that is right. We are here. I mean, that time of the year has come. It is midterm season where everyone is trying to cram what they have learned in the first six weeks of class. Well, don't stress out because we do have a free event happening today from 8 to 10 p.m. where everything in the TSU builders is completely free. That is right. We have bowling where normally it is about $4.25 for rental shoes and bowling but tonight if you come from 8 to 10 p.m it is completely free you don't have to pay anything just show up have a good time de-stress from those midterms and of course you know go ahead and throw that little ball and we'll see you there back to you at the studio thank you for joining us on another episode of oc news don't forget <laughs> to follow us on social media all our social media platforms at oc news csuf That'll do it for us. Have a good evening and see you next week here on OC News.